witnesses was a state senator from Massachusetts uh, who is also, he's been state senator for two years, he was not uh, in the Senate when Governor Romney's bill was passed. He is a CEO of Cape Air, that's a thousand employee company. Uh, it's a hard business because it's the airline business, it's a regional uh, airline. Uh, and he had some real-time experience for us. And I think it's important uh, just to say a few words about what Senator, Massachusetts Senator Wolf, who for six years served on the Federal Reserve Board's Advisory Council of New England, who was board chair of, of one of the largest chambers of commerce in Massachusetts and is a trustee of the largest mutual bank. Uh, uh, in uh, the Cape and Islands regions. This is a real small businessman uh, 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 of the kind we have in mind when we talk about small business. Uh, this is what uh, he reported, that the premiums are today under the Massachusetts bill, which is bill, our bill is patterned after, is roughly 3% of his company's gross income. And to quote him, health care reform has not stifled business. Um, since the passage of the health care reform bill, the very bill uh, that is the predecessor for our health care bill, uh, this company has added 15% more Massachusetts-based jobs. Um, he um, uh, talks about premiums. Um, importantly, he said that just before the passage of the Massachusetts law, the premiums were going up 15 to 20 percent. The, 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 they are down now to going up 5 percent. And he said last year he was able to negotiate a 5 percent decrease. My friends, part of this, a great part of this, has to do with the large pool that, of course, uh, Massachusetts citizens are in now. Uh, and when you see these reductions, uh, the state spending for health care reform programs last year represented a 1.4 percent of the state budget. Two-thirds of their residents support the health care reform. It was an extraordinary piece of, of testimony from a businessman who had no reason to come forward. He's not a politician. Yes, he's in the state Senate. But he had the credibility of being in the Senate and being a quintessential businessman. Uh, I want to suggest to my colleagues that there's a reason why our colleagues do not point to the only real experience that could tell us anything about what is going to happen with this bill. And that is because they are driven not by data, but by some ideology that, 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 that is not understandable. But once you get it in your head that if you're against a bill, even when it's passed, you've got to do all you can to kill it. If it's health care reform, you kill health care reform. If it's financial reform, even after the worst recession since the Great Depression, then you try to kill that. I think uh, that uh, in hearing what has happened in Massachusetts, that you would think Mitt Romney would be <laughs> shouting from the hilltops about. Uh, when you see what's happened in Massachusetts, that what the Republicans, what we ourselves should be doing is studying in depth uh, the experience of Massachusetts, seeing what their mistakes were, looking at their successes, instead of throwing horribles out there based on no data and based on nothing. Uh, I thank you for coming forward to start a discussion that helps give the American people some broader sense of what this struggle is about and helps them to understand that when they hear the word repeal, it is not what it means. In order to repeal, you have to get a both houses and the signature of the president. Uh, people should be alerted 
that this bill is here to stay. Uh, it is almost impossible, it will be almost impossible, and unless there is a Herculean change in the House, the Senate, and the Presidency to, over, to, 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 to change the Congress to, to the, in the direction of those who oppose the bill. Absent that, every member of this House who believes in law and order, who believes in the rule of law, has an obligation to sit down together to make this law work and not try to undermine it. To the extent that you undermine it, you are now undermining the health care of the citizens of the United States of America. And I yield to my friend.